Hello. Symbol to proc, or more accurately, the to proc instance method of the symbol class, is a handy little bit of Ruby magic that will help you tighten up certain things you do in the language. And while only seemingly relatively minor or standing on its own, it does have an interesting history and leads us into some interesting places. So, what is it? Well, let's take an array like this, three letters, super simple. Now let's use map here on the second line to map the L array of three letters into a new array that has the uppercase uh, versions of those elements in L. So lowercase a becomes uppercase a, so on and so forth. Reasonably straightforward concept. But now let's use a different syntax. We we'll use the symbol to prox syntax. You can see it's a lot cleaner, a lot tighter, perhaps a little bit alien to you. You might not have even used this before, but it is cleaner. Okay, so we're going to dig into this properly in a minute, but let me just summarize this whole thing by saying that many Ruby methods take a, a block after them. So map, each, you've probably seen quite a few. Um, you know, just like the, the code in the curly braces on you know this slide here. But can we pass blocks in a more implicit dynamic way? Can you, we build them on the fly somehow? And yes, that is clearly what's happening in this case with the, the symbol to proc uh, mechanism. So that what's happening here is the symbol colon upcase is being implicitly converted behind the scenes into a proc object that represents the equivalent block that calls the upcase method upon each element of the enumeration. So are you confused yet? We're, we're going to dig into it, so don't worry. So it's not just each or map, things like that you can use this on. Many of the enumeration related uh, methods are relevant here. So like the all question mark method of the uh, enumerable module. Um, it gets added into arrays and hashes, um, other classes that you may create. Now that method, what it does is it checks every element of a collection object, so like an array in this case, and it will return true if the logic of that associated block returns true for every element. So uh, got a very basic predicate here, which is just num.even. It will go through each of those elements. Are they all even, true or false? Well, in this case, it's false because we have some odd numbers in there. But we can shorten this, and it becomes like so. Very, very simple. That's used just using the even uh, question mark method that's available on fixnum. So, again, really tight, short, awesome. So here's one more uh, short example. Let's try enumerables group by method, which groups elements of a collection by the result of the code block run against each element. So rather than just checking whether it all you know is true or anything like that we are actually sorting out the elements by that predicate um, into a hash. So for all the odd numbers that we put into an array um, associated with false in a hash, for all the even numbers they'll end up in the true pile. And we get that at the bottom here, that's where the grouping comes from. True is all the even numbers, and false are the things that weren't true for n dot even. So this was never core functionality in Ruby, but a clever trick that someone invented and you know they first put it into a project called the Ruby Extensions Project. So that's somewhat like facets, which uh, you may have seen when I, I covered it earlier on another video. Now, because it was just a, a simple monkey patch of the symbol class and Ruby makes it easy to do simple monkey patches on core classes, it got picked up and boiled into Rails, uh, 0.14.4, so a really long time ago. So if you've been doing Rails for a long time, you've probably been starting to use this uh, technique. Then, only in 2008 did it make it into a live production version of Ruby, Ruby 1.8.7, and it's been a standard part of the language ever since, so you can totally use this without any worries. It's not some weird experimental feature. It is a standard, it's a norm, it's totally cool. So, let's take a really dry description of what symbol 2 proc method is and look at how to use it and replicate some of its functionality, just so that we can get a, an under-the-hood look and so we can understand it a bit better. So, Symbol to proc returns a proc object that invokes a method, as named by the you know, accompanying symbol, on a given object. So we need to see this in action, really, don't we? So let's go out to the editor. Here we are. So let's start off with uh, something that's really elemental. Let's just create a lambda, and we'll just put 2 times 2 in there, and we'll call that. If we run this, uh, we haven't printed out the results. We run this again, uh, we get the number 4 come up because it takes this lambda object, which is just kind of a you know, piece of code that hasn't been run yet, then we call it, we get the four come back out. And we can change this to a proc. Uh, a proc does vary from a lambda slightly. Um, it's um, you're much more strict about the um, 
you know, the arguments it gets, the arity and that type of thing. And there are some other differences. I've uh, covered those in the uh, other videos about props and blocks. So just assume this is a very similar construct, but now we need to start changing this a little bit. So we'll put i in instead. So it will uh, take a parameter of i. And now we need to call it with an argument of 2. And we run that, we get exactly the same result. So this is all very simple. So now let's look at an example of using a proc block that's implicitly created by Ruby. So what I'm going to do is I will just um, comment out this code, actually, just because I want to show you this. Let's create an array of the letters. Do it in a shorter way than we did before. Uh, take each letter, do letter upcase. We'll print that out, and we get the capital letters. Well, this here is a basically a proc behind the scenes. and We haven't got the word proc in front of it, but it works in a very similar way. So can we you know, be more explicit about this so we can see how this works? Well, yes, we can. We can create our own proc, but we need to put the word proc back in front. And then what we could do is we could say, OK, shall we try and you know, pass that proc into map and see if it will work the same way? Well, it won't. We get uh, a mistake. And it's saying, it's saying that we basically passed an argument and it didn't want an argument. And the reason is that map doesn't actually take any arguments. Uh, these you know, blocks, when they're on the end of a map line, they're not passed as uh, normal you know, arguments. They don't come in as normal parameters. Uh, they have to be denoted in a special way because it's all kind of more implicit by the scenes. So what we use for that is we use the ampersand operator. And that's its key job. It's not its only job, but its key job here is to pass a code block to a method as if it were an implicit block that's, you know, code block that's following on from it. So if we run this version, then we get what we expect. Ta-da, it works. Uh, but this isn't quite simple to proc. Uh, we've had to manually create the my underscore proc proc, and it's still just fixed to upcase. We've just basically just made the code more complicated and made it bigger. So how can we make it more dynamic? Well, another thing that the ampersand operator does is if it's not followed by a proc object, which it is here, uh, but if it's not, it will silently call behind the scenes a method called to underscore proc on the object following it in an attempt to convert that object into a proc it can then run. So let's see an example of that. Let's take an object that isn't a proc and then pass it in and make it convert. So there is one type of object that you know, has a, a two proc method on it that's not symbol, um, and these are methods. So this might sound a little bit confusing, but what we'll do is we'll say uh, m equals method puts. Now, you may not have come across this syntax before. We're going to be covering some of the metaprogramming stuff. But what this will do is it takes um, the currently available puts method. So we're passing its name in as a symbol here because we're referring to it. We don't actually want the um, you know to actually call puts, uh, which would happen if we just had puts on its own. What we want to do is we want to get access to its method behind the scenes. So what m equals method puts will do, if I do pm here, is we get an object out that is just a method object, basically. So what we can do is this can be converted to a proc, and we can do this explicitly. And it converts it into a proc. That's great. And we can actually do m.call uh, abc. And that is the equivalent of doing puts abc. So this all seems a little bit convoluted, but what this will allow us to do is it allow us to take our happy little thing here, and I'm not going to use map, I'm going to use each in this case. Go ampersand m, get rid of the to proc, run this, and you can see here in the results it prints out the ABC. So what it's doing is it converts this to proc, and then passes that off and runs it upon each different thing here. So what about symbols? Well, we need to give it a try. So let's start from scratch here. Uh, p equals upcase to proc. So we'll do this explicitly again. We'll take all of these and we'll do a map again. And we will map uh, to p. So there's no symbol here. The symbol's here. It's getting converted to a proc explicitly. So we've already got a proc object. So we don't need a symbol or anything here. Just the ampersand will do the job. Print the result. And, uh, oh, right, yep, yeah, I see why that's happened. Right, run that again, and we get our capital letters out here. Uh, you do have to be careful when using P um, because of the way it passes the code. 
So how might we kind of move a step on from this? Well, we could take our up case and you know, as long as we've got that two proc implementation, which we do, because I'm running on Windows uh, Ruby 1.9, if we run that, it will still run. And so that is where we get code like that type of thing. And so again, I'll wrap the P around it, we get exactly the same result. So if we were going to implement something like this from scratch back before Ruby 1.8.7, what would we do? Well, we clearly need to add a two proc method to symbol and then use the value of that symbol as a method name that we can then call upon each element. So here was the first implementation from that uh, Ruby extensions project. So we bust into the uh, class symbol, we go to proc, we create the proc that we want to return, we accept an object, we accept some uh, optional arguments, we then take the object that we've been passed in, so this would be like our lower cap, uh, lowercase a for example, we then use the send method, and we'll go into this in just a little bit, pass in the current symbol, so this would be the colon upcase, pass in the optional arguments, that's not too important at this stage. And what would happen now is if you did something like this, we have symbol here, this symbol has its two prop method called, so we end up here. Object would be either lowercase a, lowercase b, lowercase c, and upon that lowercase a, lowercase b, lowercase c, we use the send method, which dynamically can invoke a method that's passed to it. And in that case, it's self, which is the symbol, colon uppercase. So what happens is essentially the equivalent of doing that in a very dynamic way. And uh, if you were to run this code in IRB, this would resolve out to like so. So that's essentially happening, any optional arguments are passed in, which we don't have to worry about here, and bam, it all runs. So we run that, we get the expected result from this. So this is all pretty cool. Uh, but this implementation has flaws. Uh, so for example, it would mess up arrays that are passed into it, um, nested arrays in particular. And uh, let me just show you why um, with a, a slightly different example. So. Let's create something that's very similar, but just allows us to see what's being passed in and what's extracted. So this is a very similar structure. It doesn't actually do the calling or anything. We're not doing any enumerations or anything like that. Uh, all this is is a proc that takes in um, yeah, a mandatory argument here, um, takes in you know an optional set of arguments, uh, puts them into an array. We can see what happens. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just run this. So what we get is the one, we get an array with the two and the three. That's fine. Um, so, you know, this, if this was something like uh, the, um, the letter, sorry, like the, the small a, and then the arguments are just optional on the end, that works fine. So if we passed in an array, just one, two, three, four, five, we would want o to become this array, and then a to be the optional arguments on the end, which we don't have any. But if we run it, we just get the one. So what it's doing is it's pulling out the one from this array and then we're getting the rest of the array are being seen as the optional arguments and that's just not really cool. So instead what we should do is we should take everything in and then what we can do is we can use shift to pull the um, first element out of that array and then we can print out the remainder. And that then works. We get the one, two, three, four, five array remains intact. So this implementation became standard in Rails. So just to give you an idea, I'll type it out by hand. So def2 proc, um, they used proc.new, which is just a slightly different way of um, you know, writing it. But they took in all of the arguments, just like we did. They shifted the first one off, which was the, uh, like the, the, the lowercase a, lowercase b, whatever. They used the underscore underscore send underscore underscore method, which is basically a internal version of send that you shouldn't be monkey patching um, because you may monkey patch the send uh, method on your classes. You really shouldn't. But if you did, there is this kind of backup uh, internal version you can use. So they use that. They pass in the self, pass in the rest of the arguments, and they close. So that's a much more standard um, you know, way to implement it and a much more safe way to implement it. But the implementation in MRI Ruby today is now written in C, it's standardized, but the general concept continues to apply. So that's the basics of Symbol to Proc. 
enjoy.